Madam Speaker, the opposition takes no issue with what the Minister has announced. We would urge the government to deal with the anomalies that exist for civil servants who have been granted increases and where there are discrepancies in their salaries to urgently address those anomalies so that everyone can benefit from the new compensation package. But we take no issue. I so, Madam Speaker, I will take the member's uh, contribution as a statement of support for these reforms by the opposition, which I am grateful for. Uh, with respect to the point on uh, addressing anom anomalies, Madam Speaker, this House and the country at large can rest assured that the Ministry of Finance and the Public Service and the Transformation Implementation Unit are working overtime to address any anomalies that arise. Uh, the, you know, the anomaly to the individual is the, it's the, it's as if the world is coming down because it's their particular experience. Uh, we can't afford to look at it from the point of view of 100,000. For that individual, that is all that matters in the world. And as a result, Madam Speaker, we take each and every one of the cases brought before us absolutely seriously. While for 80% or more of persons, I would say you know, a higher number, maybe even 90%, things are working, there are no doubt anomalies that we have to address and we give our commitment to do so. And may I use the opportunity, Madam Speaker, to also spell out, and it's necessary to do it so we can solve the issues. Madam Speaker, they say if you want to understand where you need reform in the body, right, you put a new uh, a die through and you can see where the blockages are using a machine that can detect blockages. Similarly, Madam Speaker, if you want to understand the administrative challenges in the public service, you put in a new compensation system and you push it through. The Ministry of Finance is responsible for the pay policy and for reaching agreement with public sector unions and for providing the resources for the salaries to be paid. But salaries in the public service, Madam Speaker, are, the administration is very fragmented. They're implemented at a local level and each ministry, department and agency is responsible for their own implementation. For example, it is Parliament that will implement the new salaries for members of the executive and the legislature, not the Ministry of Finance and the Public Service. Similarly, each ministry and department and agency implements their segment of it, not the Ministry of Finance and the Public Service. For the vast majority of the public service, we have had that implementation go through without issue. You'll recall in December we had some issues in the health sector, but those delays were three days, four days, five days. And Madam Speaker, we have seen a re, uh, uh, something like that in the education sector, Madam Speaker, which reflects, as the Minister will tell you, the, the reforms that we're going to need to implement in the administration of, I dare say, I have to say it, the administration of education, not teachers, but the administration of education, including the financial administration, Madam Speaker. This is clear for everyone to see. We implemented a complex reform across many ministry departments and agencies. We didn't have any hitches in the police. We didn't have any hitches in the civil service. The hitch in the health sector was just a few days, etc., etc. But when it comes to the education sector, the government of Jamaica, and can't escape responsibility because it's one government. The government of Jamaica has had these challenges. And the challenges don't arise, Madam Speaker, with the Ministry of Finance. The, and we have to be able to locate the problem in order to resolve it, locate the blockage in order to sort it out. The problems have arisen, Madam Speaker, in the, the, at the calculations and administrations done at the local level, and it speaks to the reform that we need have the courage to undertake in the administration. Now, none of this is any comfort to those on the receiving end. The teachers for whom they have not, you know, they, they took a long time. It's not comfort for them. And I, we empathize with them from the bottom of my heart. But if we are about reform and if we are about making things better, we have to diagnose the problem properly. And 
Convenient diagnoses, Madam Speaker, are not helpful because if you knock at the wrong place where the problem may be, it's not going to solve it. We have to identify the problem, diagnose it, and then go about solving it. And the job that this government has, we're not going to shy away from it, and the minister is here, is that the administrative reforms that are necessary in the education sector, in particular the financial administration reforms, are paramount and we have to make them. On another occasion, I will bring to this House even further data and evidence that shows the need to do so and the benefit of the country uh, is likely to derive from doing so.